So we are fresh off Todd attending <laughs> AEW. Yes. Being that it was discussed on At Odds, and it was discussed <laughs> on We Need Wrestling, and it feels like it was a week ago since we were there, because it was. Right. We didn't get the real perspective on AEW, and that's your perspective. Right. I just have some quick notes that I wrote down for myself. Oh, my Joe. goodness. Okay. One is, the I, you know what? Because I'm not going to bury the lead. I'm not going to bury the lead. I'm going to go with the biggest thing. I got to hear the Time Cop speech. Oh, yes. And More I, on that later. Okay. And I think Tony Khan may have peppered it a little bit. He may have given us the director's cut of the the Time Cop speech because I found out it was also John claude Van Damme's highest grossing movie. So More on that later this week. Oh, okay. Anyway, <laughs> um, but it was good to see. I yeah. didn't leave because um, I, after the speech because the steps were really tall and I needed to rest a little longer before I left. <laughs> So, um, but that being said, here are just some bullet points. Um, I got to see Okada, who is definitely being booked right in AEW, Joe. <laughs> I don't think Ed listens to this show, but someone will tell him. Uh, it's sometimes it's a joke just for me. Um, I got to see Jericho uh, and OC. Uh, I like when Jericho waves that his he has his rippling muscles when he does that. Um, also, I found out that OC stands for original cheater because he used brass knuckles to win. <laughs> that Jericho uh, brought into the ring first and he stole from him, but okay. He just wanted to show him his new brass knuckles, that's all. He didn't hit him with them. It was the other way around. Um, I'm trying to think. Oh, I, I liked. I got to see the, the Young Bucks' luscious full heads of hair. Yes. Um, w- one of the high points of the night was I got to see, I got to enjoy Joe enjoying Jeff Jarrett. Yes. So, like, you were like a pig in shit, Joe, <laughs> which was absolutely fantastic. Um, I think I only have two more bullet points. Um, I got to see uh, the lower Dar- Delaware Sid Haig wrestle. So that was cool. And finally, I got to. <laughs> I'm glad you wrote that down because I forgot about that. Right, and finally, I was introduced to a new wrestler with the best gimmick in the world, and that was the Beast Bortos. He was so good. Uh, somebody told me he was also known, uh, formerly known as Black Borus. So I really think this guy's going somewhere with his almond almond skin, Joe. <laughs> he was he was the <laughs> tallest person you've ever seen wrestle as in a. In a mask like that? Yes, and I think he was... Something's uh, going on. What are you doing back there? It's called my phone wasn't shut off because we went straight oh. into it. You know what? You'll live, Joe. You, you'll we live. didn't go straight into it, but that's okay. Well, you got me all distracted with bad phone calls. But, uh, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it was really cool to see him. He was very oiled up, and I liked it. All right. <laughs> I'm glad you had a good time. Yeah, uh, I have the. We got I've to seen, go out to eat. Right? What was that? We got to go out to eat. Oh, that's right. And Todd had never been to a Cracker Barrel before. No, and in the group chat that we did, um, in the, the group first chat, one, the first and only one. Right, the first and only one. People were shocked that I have never been to a Cracker Barrel. Yes. I seem like prime material for a Cracker Barrel. Well. I uh, my my thought process about this was, um, you know, I, I it's you know, there's I don't know, is there one up like the Dixon Clark Summit way? No, not that I know of. I okay, there's ever been one, but it's not like you've been right next to that Cracker Barrel sixteen to eighteen weeks a year for the last three years. Yes, but if I'm doing that, I'm eating football food. And then if I'm right there, before we got one in in Dixon, I was going over to the Chick-fil-A, especially on Sundays because the line is short, like your wife likes. Oh, my goodness. Um, So, yeah. So it's not like that's my first choice over there. And then everybody who goes, like if we ever went down to 
Wilkes-Barre to eat, there was other stuff to do like that we always like to do, like getting the nachos at Smoky Bones back in the day, um, stuff like that. So Cracker Bell was really low on the list, so I had never been there. And I was overwhelmed by the menu. So um, (laughs) how would you rate your experience at Cracker Barrel? Salty, Joe. (laughs) Uh, I went in and the, our waitress was a, a lovely young lass who uh, I like it came down to. I'm like, I'm going to have the country ham or the what was the sugar, the, the, the maple sugar coated ham or whatever. And I was like, I bet one salty and I bet one sweet, but I wasn't sure. So I asked the lady, I said, what's the difference in these apps? She's like, the country salty, the sugar maple, whatever is, is sweet. And I was like, oh, I'll have the, the country ham. Yeah. How salty can it be? Famous I, last words. I, oh, my God. I think they marinated it in a salt mine somewhere, oh Joe. <laughs> Just like, you know, like an old salt mine that the water, like, uh, abandoned one, like the, the river kind of seeped in. So they just threw it down there and let it soak up all that juice, that salt mine juice, Joe. <laughs> and I ate it, and my like my mouth was puckering, and I'm like, I have to ask. I'm like, who wants to try some of this ham? Joe was waving me off. Um, but luckily, Brett, who came along, who didn't have COVID, um, he uh, he ended up, oh, I'll have some. And I gave him a small piece, and he goes, that's the goddamn saltiest ham I have ever eaten in my entire life. And that's why, halfway through Dynamite into Rampage, I couldn't walk the steps. So Because my heart was pounding from salt. So, as salty as the the country ham was, mm-hmm. imagine how sweet the other one must be if we're playing those probability laws. I, you know what? We'll find out next time I go. Oh my goodness! Because I'm like, I like ham. I have to see the pendulum swing on the hams at at uh, <laughs> at you know Cracker Barrel, which I was right. calling Country Crock the whole time. By the way, right. But, Todd um, didn't like the the general store part of uh, Cracker Barrel either. I, I didn't. I didn't. I liked that it had like a what would what would you call like the pan? There's a a skillet. They had like an old timey skillet you could buy. I'm like, okay, I get that. This is a Cracker Barrel. But then they had Pikachu's and Mario's, and I'm like, no, like unless they're Cracker Barrel themed. I don't want to. I don't want to see it. But then I marked out because there was a tiny cowboy hat that I almost bought for the for the wrestling show. Um, but. So yeah, that was that was interesting. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm glad you came. Um, I know Tony Khan said that there's a 100 percent chance that they'll be coming back to Mohegan Sun there in Wilkes Barre. Will you be coming along as well? If the Next. price is right again and we can uh, go to Cracker Barrel, yes. Okay. And maybe we'll go to IHOP or Denny's by the time that they come back. Maybe the new Fantastic Four movie will be in theaters. Right. And Denny's will go for round two on the Thing Burger. Oh, my God. Oh, what was worse for me? The Thing Burger at, like, 2,400 calories and Thing Sauce? Yes. Or just salt and ham? Well, most of those chain places, you know, whether it be a Denny's or a Cracker Barrel or an IHOP or whatever, you know, Perkins. Perkins tried to revamp their menu, and I haven't been there since, so I can't speak for them. But, like, everything is salty. But, like, so for something to stand out as super salty, mm-hmm. like, there, that's a, an achievement, to say the least. Yep, yep, because you add a little bit of salt to everything. But yep. I really wish you tried some, Joe. No, I've I've had it before. I knew it. I knew what you were doing. You could have waved me off. No, well, I try. Listen, you need to make your own decisions. You're a big boy, right? Well, you know what? If we ever go somewhere and I know something's going to be spicy, yes, and you order it not thinking it's spicy, I'm just going to go. Eh, he's got to make his own choices. Yeah. And if it has cheese on it, I'm just going to go. Eh, he has to make his own choices. That's right. Thank you. <laughs> I appreciate that. You're welcome. Let me make my own life decisions when it comes to food. Hmm. No, but I, I, I think I have a higher salt tolerance uh, than you do, you know? I still don't think you could tolerate this. I think you even you would be... Uh, it might be too much? 
it might be too much. That being said, I ate every bite. I've had ham at Crackerville before, but I think you got a special slice. I got the one that was at the bottom of the tray. Yeah, the one that, as you mentioned, the the proverbial salt mine was this thing at the bottom, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Because there's one of the, like, grandma's country biscuit breakfast (laughs) or some shit, right? Right. Where it's like you get two eggs... Uh, your choice of either the muffins, uh, cornbread, or pancakes, and three meat choices. Mm. And they only have three meats that you could choose from. I th- or like it's like it's like either bacon, sausage, turkey sausage, Ugh. country ham, or maple ham. Those are your choices. Well, I had one of those. Right. I will say. Um, as all the talk that I heard about the gravy, the gravy was good, but it wasn't that great. So Mm -hmm. when they had it, um, Oh my God, it's well over 15, 20 years ago. TGI Fridays had the best of the sausage gravy. Mm -hmm. They had a sausage gravy that you could dip that you can get like with your chicken fingers and stuff. And I used to go there all the time and get chicken fingers, get the gravy. We're good. And then I went there one day. Uh, with a friend of mine, oh my god, this at, at least 20 years ago. And they're like, oh, we don't have that as, a, as an option anymore. And I go, oh, okay, I'll need to look at the menu. And the, the waitress left, and then me and my friend that were there, I go, we're gone, we're going. I go, the only reason I came here was to eat that meal. And if they don't have that sauce to dip it in, we're not coming here anymore. Right. And we Hopefully you didn't, you, didn't uh, you paid for your sodas before. Yes, I, I, we like threw like a five on the table or whatever it was. Right, good for you. I'm no cheapskate. I overtip. I even throw, like, when I go pick up Chinese. We've talked about this before. When I go pick up Chinese, I throw at least two bucks in the thing when I'm just picking it up, you know? Right. Um, I I tip a buck for my Chinese thing because it comes out to literally my Chinese order, and I've said this before, comes out to, like, $19.24. So I'll walk in with a 20 and a quarter and just lay it on the counter. There you go. You know, it works out nice, you know? Yeah. So I have um, a discovery. So I recently got addicted to gummy bears. I know. I hear you before we start the show, non on them occasionally. Right. Uh, microphone's too good. Uh, it's those Albanese ones, you know, the alleged world's best ones. Right. Now, I can go and I can get them at my local Turkey Hill. Right. Mm-hmm. And it's like $3.50 a bag. Right. Or I could go like a little extra walk the other way and go to like the Dollar General. That's the yellow one. Mm -hmm. And I can get the same bag for two bucks. Right. The Chinese version with lead in it. Got it. Okay. Now, this was something that had come up like a week or so ago. And I'm like, oh, this needs to be a topic for After Dark. And it never came up. Um, So because you know me. Mm hmm. Um, I, I had a bag that I got from the Turkey Hill and I had a bag that I had gotten from the, the, the dollar general. I'm not saying that I counted the number of gummy bears that were in it, but I definitely weighed the two bags Mm -hmm. and they weighed within like two grams of each other on the, the food scales that we have. Right. Uh, I looked at the nutritional facts in the back where it says how many servings are in this container and they both said the same. Which is six, right? Right, or so one. Like, what? And then I look at the, I looked at the ingredients to see if there was any discrepancies, like all the labels, all the differences, everything else. Do you want to know what the difference is between the two? The one that you get at the Dollar General, the one you get at the convenience store, at a I dollar mean, like, difference. Like I said, lead. I don't know. The one that you get at the convenience store for a dollar more has the Ziploc resealable bag thing. Oh, okay. And the one at, uh, whatchamacallit, Dollar General doesn't have that. You know what I have? I have uh, uh, potato chip bag clips that'll do the job. Uh, Exactly. And there's a way to fold the bag the right way that you don't need clips if you know what you're doing. And I know what I'm doing. There you go. So that's all. Um, But where I was coming from was um, it's one of those things where... You know, we may have talked about this before, but it's been a long time. But it was one of those things that came in my head because 
um, the like the knockoff version of something, or you know, there's all these like TikTok videos. Like April ran a wa- a Walgreens TikTok scam the other day. Okay, where like th- these extreme couponing people. Right. Like, opportunity, the, you mean? Right. There. Okay. There's these extreme couponing opportunity people on like TikTok and whatnot. Mm-hmm. That like, oh, you know, this is the week. Go to your Dollar General, your Dollar True, whatever it is, and these are all the items that are scanning for a penny. Right. Mm-hmm. Well, that's great, but like, I don't need ice scrapers in September. You know, and they're not. You know, so it's one of those things. So she had gotten the one where it was like actually good information, mm-hmm. where it was like, okay, if you go on Friday, this particular brand of toilet paper, which is normally X, for whatever reason, on Fridays rings up at half price, mm-hmm. but you have to do the order like through the app, where you're going to come and pick it up, where they put all the shit together for you, right? Right. I'm out, but go ahead. Right. So you don't do apps, but it was a bunch of stuff that we needed. So it was like the toilet paper and I forget whatever else it was. And, you know, she was very happy with herself and it's the little things in life that make people happy that I'm like, all right, I'm happy too. Right. Right. But where I was going with this was we recently ran into a situation with garbage bags Mm -hmm. right? where we had gotten like the members mark or whatever the fuck it's called, like the generic garbage bags. Right. And we had gotten the deal from walgreens where it was like the hefty you know duras whatever bags it was the same size at the same price but it's like okay well hefty is a name brand members mark is the generic brand we'll get the the hefty one right Mm -hmm. well the reason these ones were on sale was because these ones don't have that like little tiny bit of elastic on them that fits around your garbage can right they're practically useless Oh, okay. Because they just fall in the can. You have to, like, then it's a bag underneath all the garbage you threw in. So what happens is you have to pull it down far enough that then, like, the the bag isn't, like, resting at the bottom of Mm -hmm. the can. So when you throw the first thing in, it just knocks the bag right out, you know? Right. So, like, the first couple things that you put in the bag, you have to, like, gingerly place in so the bag doesn't fall in. The mm-hmm. Flex Fit members mark one's like, forget about it. Like, we're just, like, dumping entire things of sauce in there and it's staying put. Right. Yeah. So I is there any other, like, generic versus, like, real brand ones that have worked in your life or no? No, because I only I, – I don't really do a lot of generic stuff because – I'm a creature of habit. So like I've said before, I like my like my ragu sauce. So I go and I buy they have the teeny tiny one serving bottles and I buy them. So it's not like I go and change <laughs> anything. It's like uh like I said like if I get the pasta for it, I always buy the not the store brand pasta but like like san Giorgio or whatever because the the cheap stuff falls apart paper plates i go for the good stuff bags soda but i only have like 13 things i eat at home or so right so like it's not like i'm loading up on like expensive stuff but like when i get paper plates because i don't use a lot of like things i get the wax covered paper plates yep and I buy the the ten inch ones or the eight inch ones. You can't hold as much food on them. So what the fuck are we doing here, you know? And do that. And then the one thing that I will buy in bulk is my brother gets them for me because I don't have uh, like a, a card for what's the what's the local big box store? It's not uh, Sam's Club. Sam's Club. The whatever garbage bags, the big garbage bags that they use, mm. like like the ones that you use for like leaves and shit yes, like that. That's what I use. For, like, the garbage in the house. Like, I just, I hang it off the doorknob because I'm a bachelor. And I just, when I walk over, I dump whatever I'm dumping in it. And then it has the two red drawstrings and you pull it close tight. And I just go out to the front door and and do the the spiral chuck. And it lands in my grass and it don't burst open. But they are the Sam's Club version. Right. So they are like way cheaper. And I always buy, like, I think they, there's like, I don't know if there's like 150 in the box or whatever. So my my garbage only goes out once a week. I only need one bag unless I'm like, you know, doing spring cleaning. But that's another story. Um, so like a box will last me two years. 52 weeks in a year, like 100 bags, you get the math. 
and I'll buy, I, I have my brother buy me two. I bought me two the first time. Then when one's gone, I have him get me another. So I always have one open, unopened box in case I ever, you know, need to, to have a garbage of, bag emergency or something. Right. Get rid of some bodies or something, you know? Right. Right. But that's all. I really don't, like I said, I don't go, uh, like when I buy cups, to drink out of when I want to get uh, cartoon drunk, as we as I say on the weekends, I buy the solo cups. Like I, I don't know. I'm like I, uh, I got money. I don't need the cheap shit. Right. So that's the thing. It's the the garbage bags are one of the only few things that work. Like typically bags, um, you know, like Ziploc bags and things like that. Eh, it's hit or miss. Like it's one of those things where like best yet aren't as good but the members mark ones are a little bit better ziploc whatever but that's just me uh i'm glad that we kind of fall in the same area with the garbage bags that the glad like expensive ones didn't work as well because we were so used to the you know kitchen uh, uh sam's club walmart brand whatever whatever right and this all comes from me because I, I towards the end of her life i had to take care of my grandmother my my father's mother and they like they they occasionally would get cheap. Like my grandfather died when I was in high school, but I'm talking my grandmother only died like in 2006 or eight or something like that. And she was the kind that would send me to the store, and she'd be like, "These pickles are going to be like 89 cents for the like three gallon jar." I'm like, "Those are going to be the shittiest pickles she's ever eaten, right?" And I'll br- and I'd bring them to her, and she'd eat them, and she'd go, "These are terrible. They're all soggy, and they're blah blah blah." And I'm like, "All right, you want me to throw them? No, no, we don't throw anything away. Like I'll make some like meatloaf with pickle in it and whatever. Ugh. Do you know what I mean? Like whatever, because she did not throw anything away. She was depression era, so." She'd do all that, but sometimes, sometimes she'd be like, oh, these are bad. Take them back. And I would go get our money back, and I would just go get ice cream, look at the receipt, see how much it is, go to my house, get the money, put my feet up for a while, eat my ice cream, go, all right, they were a dollar eleven. Here's your dollar eleven, Grandma. I wouldn't even take them back. Like it, it wasted more in gas because she'd like send me to like 10 stores around here. Like go get the meat from this store, go get the paper towels from this store. And I'm like, yeah, he- here you go. Here's your order. And here's your change. And Oh my God, I use coupons and even got more money back. Grandma. <laughs> you know what I mean? And it was all money out of my pocket. I'd go to one store. I was like, I don't have time for this shit. Uh, my dad is real big on that sort of stuff. Like he'll go to three different grocery stores, like looking at the deals and God forbid, um, something rings up different than what's in the flyer. Like he'll have the flyer there as they're ringing shit up. Right. And if it rings up wrong, he'll be like, uh, uh, that's what it is here. Yeah. You got to give me that price, you know? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. Now, now, if there's something I like, like here's the big one for me around around like you know like the fruit season for cherries, I'm addicted to the like Bing cherries kind of a deal. Right. So during when they come out, they'll be like, oh, if you get an order for like twenty five dollars, which I could put together like no, like nothing, like the cherries are nine dollars a pound. And if you get a $25, they're a dollar a pound, like, you know, up to five pounds. And I'll just be like, all right, well, I buy soda, soda, like, you know, the soda I buy to buy the three, get the three free, you're at $21 already. So I'm like, oh, well, let me just get some water for the house or whatever I need. And then, then I buy the, the cherries in bulk. I never pay the seven or $9 because like a pound, that's ridiculous, but. You know, I'm not Mr. Like, oh, uh, I got to save money. Or the other thing I'll do is not saying I won't go to multiple markets. Only if, like, because I think it's a it's a pyramid scheme with these <laughs> with these uh, fucking grocery stores that they don't carry like that they get in league together. It's like, all right, you don't carry these seventeen things, 
and we won't carry these 17 things that people want. And that way everybody goes to like the different grocery stores because there's a couple of grocery stores around here. Like there's products that I want and I'll go over. I'll be like, oh, why don't they have like my favorite pretzel? Why don't they have that at the local grocery store? That's only two blocks from me. I got to go four towns over to get that one because they don't carry it. Yeah, And that's the only time that I'll go from like store to store just to get well, something that I can't get somewhere else. I, I know it's, it's, I know you're making a joke and say it's a conspiracy theory. It's the grocery stores working together mm-hmm. and it's not really that, but it's them changing who the distributor that they use. And it's the right. distributors doing that to the grocery stores, not mm-hmm. the grocery stores doing it to us. Mm-hmm. Um, cause there was definitely a time where the Wegmans changed and I forget what it was, but like how you said it was your, like your favorite type of pretzel or whatever it was, right? Bachman butter twist in case anybody's wondering, <laughs> but it was a certain kind of coffee, right? Right. And then all of a sudden they didn't have that coffee anymore. And I went and I just happened to see the person stocking the coffee shelf. And I'm like, cause a lot of times like Wegmans or a store like that will have something where, you know, whatever the item was, and they'll have a little sign that says, like, oh, we're sold out, but we're going to be getting more in soon, right? There was just Right. Uh, or at least the go, labels. Hey, whatever are... happened to so-and-so coffee. Right. And they're like, oh, yeah, the distributor changed who they deal with, so we don't get that coffee anymore, but they replaced it with this other kind. Mm-hmm. Okay. So I tried the other kind, and it wasn't as good, but whatever, right? Mm-hmm. But it's, it's the distributors, and it's, you know, it's however yep. that works. But it's them working against each other, that they we're not going to have this to give to that. So Right, or or it's like a new brand trying to get a shoehorn in. Like, so they'll say, like, oh, like, give us, like, these shelves. And that's happened to me before where I go to that spot, and it's like, I, I'll just use the Bachman pretzels. It's like, oh, I like these. And then I go to that spot, and it's like now they're, like, these new, like, just pretzels I've never even seen or heard before. And here's like the brand with seven different flavors. And then it's, it's like, I know what you did. You got rid of the other one. So you could try these. Somebody gave you a great deal or whatever, and you're trying them. And I'm like, Nope, I'll go to the next store over and get what I'm looking for. So I do hate that though. It, that does bother me. The, the one that I, the one that I don't like, and it doesn't happen often, but obviously when it happens, I notice it. Like I'm not the type of guy you know, we go somewhere, it's like, what do you want? Diet Coke, Diet Pepsi, whatever you have, right? Right. I'll take whatever. I'd rather Diet Coke, I'll drink Diet Pepsi under protest. So uh, over the summer, when Deadpool Wolverine came out, we were running late, so we didn't get a chance to go to the concession stand. It was like, go in. We saw a line. They only had one person working the thing, so I'm ordering the tickets on my phone so we could scan the thing and go up. And, like, we missed the first two trailers, and my thing only does four trailers anyway, right? So we're, like, we're in a rush. Two weeks ago, when we went to go see Beetlejuice, uh, we had time, so we're like, all right, let's go over to the concession stand. I'm like, something's different about the concession stand here. All right. And at some point over the summer, the local dirt theater by me switched over from Coke products to Pepsi products. Yeah, baby. And I said something about it. I go, when'd you guys, uh, when'd you guys get rid of Coke? And they're like, oh, I had to be like beginning of the summer. And I just shook my head and I'm like, I'll take my Diet Coke or my Diet Pepsi under protest. But I liked it because you know, they did Coke. And I do know, you know, we talked about like them trying to push things. Um, I know the Pepsi people um, definitely do undercut the Coke people. As they should, because you want to get the best product out there at the best pro- possible price for the masses, Joe. Mm, I guess. You know me. They didn't. They didn't change the price of a a large drink at the uh, Dirt Theater when they switched from Coke to Pepsi. Well, good for them. Um, I'll say this: I don't want to go to Coke because then I have to steal all new uh, six pack carrying cases. So. Right. But now, yeah. one last thing I got to talk about. And again, oh, okay. Was there something else you had? This is about the Patreon, nope. by the way. Patreon.com/slash nope. Longbox Heroes. That, that was everything. Okay. So, um, maybe you listened to the Patreon show this past week and maybe you didn't. Mm-hmm. Maybe you're at the $5 level and you're listening to this early. So you did. And you see it sitting there. And you know we spin the wheel, right? Right. See what we're going to watch for next week. And it came up upon, as we're like kind of loop ending this around, it came up upon Time Cop. Mm-hmm. Maybe you're listening to this free when it comes out on Friday. Which means... If you're a member of the At Odds with Wrestling Patreon, then you already heard us talk about 
Time Cop. Right? Mm -hmm. The way that we record the show is kind of like Time Cop, because we're in two places at once, right? Right. We're on Tuesday night when the people who pay the $5 get it, and then we're also on Friday night when everybody else gets it. Mm Mm-hmm. So... Um, and then I know off mic last week we were talking about um, other stuff to add to the list. Right. And I found some more things to add to the list, Todd. Okay. Does, does it include the Time Cop TV show? It includes the Time Cop TV show. Which I was going to bring up to you either on mic or off mic. So Okay. So with the digging that I did, and we already added, you know, we added, we just recorded uh, RIPD this past week. We mm-hmm. added R.I.P.D. 2, which is a directed DVD sequel, which uh, which is a prequel, which none of the people from the first one are in. We did add Time Cop 2, the Berlin decision. Right. So I guess we are going to add the Time Cop TV show. Right, the first episode or whatever. It is. Uh, the, you know, however they do it. Right. So then I was reminded that there were two other TV shows based on popular film franchises that we had forgotten about. Okay. And then this got me down a whole thing to get into as well. So I forgot in 2006 on Spike TV, there was a Blade TV show. Yeah, I, re- I kind of remember that. There's no way that's good. Are we adding that to the list? Oh, sure. Why not? Now, th- where we run into an issue is, you know, we're, we're, we're putting like the, 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 the oddity stuff on here, right? The weird mm-hmm. stuff. You know, right. we could just we could just do a wheel of all bangers and have a great night. You know, mm-hmm. nobody wants to hear us talk about Captain America: Civil War. They want to hear us talk about Witchblade or something. You know, right? So, I think we could all agree that the first Crow movie was actually good. Correct? I, I think we had this conversation early, early on. But yeah, the the Crow movie. I love the the Brandon Lee Crow movie. Yeah. And we could have gotten down the rabbit hole of doing, like, the sequels, right? hmm And I think we made an executive decision not to do the sequels. Right. Did we make an executive decision not to do the Canadian-produced pr- syndicated TV show from 1998? I don't think we discussed the Canadian uh, TV show from 1998. Syndicated, I'm sorry. I don't want to leave <laughs> Could that Could we out. add it to the list? Sure, why not? All I mean, right. what the hell? What, what are we doing here if we can't watch <laughs> Canadian Crow? You know? <laughs> oh my god. I when I was looking up stuff and I stumbled upon Time Cop TV show from nineteen ninety-seven. Mm-hmm. I'm only I was like, happy. I wonder if there's other, uh, any other short lived TV shows based on comic book properties. The crow out of Canada. I'm only happy when I'm eating Putain. Oh my goodness. <laughs> what the hell was the name of the band? Uh god damn it. Jesse and the Rippers. Uh, no, Tragically Hip. Have you ever heard of the band Tragically Hip? No. Apparently they were a big deal in Canada. Oh. Or maybe Minnesota, if you will. <sighs> Don't start talking about getting over borders and lakes and stuff. No, I'm not I'm talking about nothing. I'm just saying. I It was a band right? I'd never heard of, but they're very like... Um, They're, they're definitely... What if bare naked ladies didn't make it big? Oh, okay. That's who tragically hip is. So you're basically saying bare naked ladies without their two hits? Correct. Gotcha. Tragically hip has zero hits. Okay. But they were like they were only big in Canada. They never got across the border. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. I just love adding stuff to the wheel. It makes me happy. Right, so that's like seventy-eight products we have to watch now. So. Yeah, we're good. We're I think we're good plus six years. Oh, good. Uh, but that's it. Uh, we're I gotta. I, we, we're recording Time Cop this week for all the patrons, I guess. Right, even though yep. ours might come out later, who knows? Right. Yeah, listen, it's incentivizing you to sign up for the Ad Odds Patreon to get a taste of the Longbox Heroes Patreon. Or you could just wait a month and get it there. Right. It'll be just as right. fresh. We'll 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 do our best to keep all timely references out of the recording. Right, and I may have some ideas after the show. So, oh my goodness. Mm-hmm. All right, hey everyone, we plugged the Patreon, we plugged the main show, we plugged everything. Oh, you know what? I one last thing. 
Oh, one lap. This isn't my fault this week. Go ahead. All right. This is my Columbo moment. Okay. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Right. Remember last week there were issues with the website? Yes. That I couldn't replicate? Yes. Is it replicating for you now? Adam got them to happen to him Thursday night. Mm -hmm. And I go, what the fuck is going on? Right? Right. So what was happening was if you just went to longboxheroes.com, you were fine. If you mm-hmm. clicked on any of the, th- the links there, you were fine. But for some reason, if you were accessing the link from somewhere else, like clicking on the link through Twitter or clicking on the link through the Tumblr or whatever it is, it was taking you to those like spam sites, right? Right. I go, what the fuck is going on, right? Mm-hmm. Now, we host the site through WordPress. Um, so I go into that to see if maybe there's something that I could do there. And there's all these different plugins that run for the site. If you're familiar with site building in this way, there's plugins. I have it set up so that it just automatically updates the plugins. Mm -hmm. Every once in a while, one or two will slip through where it says, will not be done automatically. You have to manually do it. Gotcha. And wouldn't you know, one of the ones that you had to do manually was one of those ones that was the spam block and filter, whatever the fuck it was, right? Gotcha. So I went, I did that, and I said, Adam, test it now. I went, I tested it myself. I accessed, uh, you know, links directly from the site, linked to something on the site, off of my phone, clicking it mm-hmm. through Twitter, off of Twitter, through the PC, off of the Tumblr, everything else, and it was fine. It should be fine right. now. Right, because I'll say this. It wasn't happening constantly. Do you know what I mean? Like, I could go seven times, and I would get those spam, like, whatever. I called them redirects. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Uh, So I would get them. And then the eighth time would be the website. Yeah. And I would be fine, and I would go. And my thing was, I wasn't doing it through links, like you said, through Twitter. It seemed like when I was on Wi-Fi at my house, I was fine. But when I wasn't on Wi-Fi, like out in the ether, that's when it was happening to me. Like there was no rhyme or reason to it other than that for me. So, Mm -hmm. uh, but if you seem to like figured it out, that's good. So I, with Adam's help to prompt me that it was still going on. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. It should be okay now. I hope so. I'm going to, I'm going to go right now and see if it's working. I'm doing it myself right now with my. When did you when did you do this, by the way? Thursday night. OK. Nope, it's still not. OK, mine just did it. Uh, it went right to the site or no? I went through uh, on my phone through. Uh, no Wi-Fi, and it's telling me like to go to some. It's saying this site cannot be reached. There is a typo in search, like b- some long word dot live. Shit. So I thought it was fixed Thursday. Son of a bitch. No. Nope. Anyway. Uh, all right. Well, that's see. That's I'm at w- least glad that like. Because I was under the impression it was me and Matt who were having the problem, and me yeah. and Matt sent each other links. Like, oh, like, oh, this is something Jack White said on this website or Alice Cooper's playing here or this comic or whatever. So I was like, oh, maybe we got some malware that we sent each other. Like, in a, like you know what I mean? Sending a site and you click on it or whatever. And it was only us. It wasn't happening to you. It wasn't happening to other people that I was trying. And then you said it happened to Adam. So maybe, you know, like, at least I'm not crazy, if that makes any sense. Yeah, fuck. Because, th- like I said, whatever I did Thursday night seemed to fix the problem, but obviously today it's not. So right. And if I ever see, I'll kind of show you what I'm doing. But anyway, yeah. All right. Is that everything then? Yeah, that's everything now. God damn it. Mm-hmm. <sighs> All right, everybody. That was the the show. <laughs> see, I brought I brought Joe down at the end. Eh, it is what it is. Bye, everybody. You're listening to the soon-to-be-named network, the Lamborghini of Podcast Networks.